Well, on Monday mornings like this, uh, we need a little extra boost to get out of bed and face the week that's ahead. That's why you need Wake Up Nigeria. And Nigeria. that's why we are always on the show. We're right there on your screens from 7 a.m. Yes, All of us. indeed. Yes, indeed. That's we, right. ha we have only <laughs> one mission to accomplish. And uh, I don't know why Mary's quiet. What? <laughs> just quiet and smiling at us. Oh, dear me. We're just going to do everything possible to mm. chase away those Monday blues. I'll and... also make champions out of you, if you know what I mean. Yeah. A little bit of Monday motivation got to be going on this morning. So looking forward to it. Now, guess mm. what? You made the right choice just making a date with us. You made the right choice just staying right there by your screen. And as long as you stay all the way till 845, it's going to be great. Yeah. My name is Titi Laya Owens. And I'm Yomi Open. Nigeria will be getting better pretty soon. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> really? You don't I, know what that means? Well, yeah. We'll Yomi. talk about it off cam. Okay, no problem. But yeah, <laughs> if, if, you need no to, if you need to leave the house, let's just remind you that we're streaming live right now on tvcontinental.tv and on Facebook as well. At TVC Connect. Please connect with us. We love it when you do that. Send in your comments with the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now, what's happening today? Well, something's happening in the kitchen. Mm. It's already going on. Uh, Mary's all smiles with uh, the boss of Natido Cuisine himself. Something always happens here. Mm. <laughs> so Nathaniel, good morning. How are you doing morning, today? Good morning. I'm fine. Okay, so we are having October in March. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Independence Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Mary? Okay, so there's a, lot, there's a lot going on in the kitchen today. And he's already hard at work. We can yeah, see that he's chopped out all the stuff. Easy. And, you know, yeah. So really at the end of the show, fresh. definitely, we'll have the meal ready for you to have a taste. Is it virtual taste? We'll but, well, hey, do you know a lot of people just assume all the food tastes amazing? And yes, so, yes it does, for the most part. They assume, they assume that it does. Why? Because of the way we describe it and we, you know, rave about it all through the day. Yeah. But one thing we can tell you is that Nathaniel Zono, this particular chef, is it's not nice. like... It's something it's to look forward to. This guy is really good. So um, now everybody procrastinates, except people who have learned the hard way that it's better not to do so. We have Victoria Praise Abram. She'll be joining us this morning to give us our Monday dose of motivation on why we need to stop procrastinating. From there, we get to music this morning. Dakmo Toberna is our guest artist. We'll also be having a chat with him. It appears that the rains came a little early this year, and that means we have to take extra safety measures when driving. Aya Shofela is going to be back with us to talk to us about the proper way to drive through floods. Mm. A big deal in Lagos. That's, that is a really big deal. Mm. And kicking off our SME series for this month of March is Shileola Ibirunke. She's the managing director of uh, Micromedia and CEO of Micromedia Marketing Limited. Mm. Can't wait to hear what she has to say. Yes, so. Yeah. Quite a lot in store today. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, mm. it's Monday. Hmm. Um, so, so what did you do over the weekend? Okay, well. <laughs> Seeing I was in church on Friday into Saturday. Okay. Uh, I don't know why Mary's shaking her head. No. I What's your own? It's, it's, um, I cannot okay, shake so, my head. So anyway, <laughs> Mary, shake your head, shake your head. <laughs> so I, well, I spent the, the, a good part of the morning resting and then... Okay. Um, so what was happening in church that dragged you all the way from Friday to Saturday? We were praying for you guys. We were praying for, for you <laughs> yourself as well. <laughs> for, the, for the country. We are praying for you guys. <laughs> For peace in the north, the south, the east, and the west. Okay. And just making sure that you, yeah, know, you so can see everybody's now. happy now. We're covered everybody. now. Oh, yeah, you guys are covered. Yomi has prayed for us. So we're all ready. <laughs> you guys are covered. I was at covered work all weekend long. Uh, Saturday morning, radio. Sunday morning on radio, yes. So. I hope I enjoy it now. You and Coco. How? Do, do our viewers <laughs> know Mary's on radio? Uh, yes, I'm on radio. <laughs> Max yeah. FM. Yeah, Saturday, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Sunday, yeah, 7 a.m. Yeah. How much do you pay your Yeah, right. Really? Yes. Huh? Oh, for the, for the hype of it. Yeah. <laughs> really? okay. No, just in case, so, because there are people... What who... was Mike doing? Don't, okay, now, don't yeah, I, I'll talk about it. So, I, on Friday, I, I saw a replay of Trevor Noah's Daily Show. Okay. And he, and he said, oh, so, he goes like this. After, you know, he tackles Trump very well, steady. Mm -hmm. That's his yeah. stock in trade. <laughs> Himself and Trump, ah. <laughs> so, he just goes, ah, oh, so, my home country is in the news. Ah. Okay. 
and then you know the pastor that has been trending. Okay. <laughs> uh, for oh, okay, so yeah. The story of uh, supposed uh, guy that was raised from the dead in South Africa. Oh, <laughs> so it was the way he said. He said, he said, my home country is in the news. So it was quite funny. He said, he said, do you know one reason why I don't believe it? He said, see, an African man does not stand when something like that happens. <laughs> then he now brought a video. He said, look at what happened when David Blaine made a car disappear. You <laughs> to see four black men taking off. <laughs> He said, that's what happens okay. when black men see things that are natural. They run. So if the guy was truly raised from the dead, you think people wouldn't have stayed around to see it. That's what you're saying. I just leave that well, one, the family members <laughs> insist that the guy was already was moving in the, no, in uh, the yeah. coffin while they were taking him there. The guy, uh, but the hilarious the story part for me was... I, I don't know if you saw the certificate, the death and resurrection certificate that was uh, trending. No, no. I'm not kidding. It was Pastor, trending. they've come I'll out with that. I'll show you later. The, the different things <laughs> have just come Okay, so his, his family members were, were, were saying something else. Yes, yes. they so said he was already have, moving. Different so have come out to read. Different stories, really. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> well, you can't say miracles do happen. Yes, they do. They I, do. They do. But Especially when you pray. Monday morning with your self-defense and taekwondo trainer, Tosdalen Peter, and with me here is John King Roberts. So we shall be taking you through some basic kicks in self-defense. So join me as we practice together. So the first kick I'm going to be doing this morning is um, the front snap kick, which is a kick to the groin and to the stomach level, also to the face level. So I will show you how to apply this. So you come this way, straight to the groin, to the chest, and to the jaw. And this is applied with the uh, ball of your foot. So the next one is the knee boot, which is applied with the um, knee cap. So you go this way, you can either kick straight to the groin this way, and to the stomach. And you can also do it from the side this way by bringing your opponent close to yourself and you strike in. So this is the knee boot and the front snap kick. The next one is the roundhouse kick. The roundhouse kick can also be done through to the level, to the lower level, monsoon level and the up level. So you go this way to the knee. This helps to drop the person's gravity. So when you kick this way, the person goes down this way and your kick must be very strong and effective. The next one is to the stomach, stomach level, you kick straight to the stomach so you can go aggressively, Cha! so you go straight like that and then to the first level, to the jaw, Cha! you go straight to the jaw, you slap to the jaw. So by doing this, you are helping your core and you are also helping for a better kick. Now we are going to show you some by kicking in the air, watch this. So we go stretch to the stomach, to the groin area, to the middle now. Yeah. To the first level. Yeah. Now we switch. Good. So the other one we are doing the round out kick. Go. Yeah. yeah. This is to the knee. Go to the center yeah. and to the first level. Yeah. Good. We switch. Now the last kick for today is the ass kick. The ass kick can actually be applied to the face to break the nose or to be hit on the chest. Now for you to do it so, watch me, I'm going to use this face level as my target. Now for the sake of practice, I don't want to hit him. So I'm going to use the side of his body. So I go all the way, I hit, I go again, here. Now we're going to practice that quickly in the air. We go. Yeah. yeah. This is the outward kick, which is the crescent outwards. So we switch and we do the crescent inwards. We go. Yeah. yeah. We take that again. Yeah. yeah. So in all of these, these are the kicks you can practice at your home during your leisure or anytime at anywhere. So with this, you feel more relaxed, it helps build your core, and it also gives you enough strength to move on. 
Thank you for watching again. I remain Tosdalen Peter. All right, you're welcome to the kitchen right here on Wake Up Nigeria. I can't wait to get started. It's a brand new week. Welcome you, you. And of course, Chef Nathaniel is in the kitchen today. Yeah. So, what are we making? Um, we're making egg panzanella salad. Egg panzanella salad. Yeah, it's okay. a type of Italian food, but I just modified it. What, what modification did you include? Egg. Just the egg? Yeah, okay. and I'll a little bit fry the, the some of the, the vegetable. Oh, yeah, okay. just a little bit, so okay. that's just the difference. That's just the modification. Yeah. Let's talk about the ingredients. The ingredients are on your screen right now for the egg panzanella salad with fruit kebab. Yeah. All right, so let's get started. So we have um, tomatoes and onions. Okay, then there's no have, pepper there? No scotch bonnet? No, no, just okay. the just the bell, bell peppers. Then we have milk, um, eggs, vegetable oil. oil, and this is vinegar. Okay. and chopped bread. Okay. Then we have spring onions, green peas, and basil, which is scent leaf, okay. and carrots, and, and um, yeah, um, cabbage, cabbage there. yeah, well, with this? crayfish. With crayfish. Yeah. crayfish, okay, that's then another have, twist to it. Yes, okay. then we have black pepper, mm -hmm. cinnamon, nutmeg, seasoning, rosemary, and salt. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah. what's the first thing we're doing? First thing is to, we're going to fry the bread so it's somehow golden brown, so okay. it's be crispy. Okay. So before we do that, I'll add a little bit cinnamon. The oil is eating up already, it's not? Okay. Yeah, just a little bit cinnamon to mix let me, it. Let me take care of that. You go okay. on with what you're doing. So. Just a little bit cinnamon. Okay. Just a little bit the of The only thing you're putting in it is cinnamon? Yes. Nothing just, else? No, no. Okay. Then just little oil in it. Oil. Well, what's the purpose of the cinnamon? It adds extra flavor to the bread. So okay. it's not just plain bread. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So we're going to fry the bread with uh, cinnamon. Yes. Take a look at this. Looks nice, doesn't it? Okay. Yeah. I think I should clear this place for you so you can work in between. Everybody can see what you're doing. So that's what the bread looks like when the cinnamon has been put yeah. in. You don't need much oil because so it's not soak the bread, just a little. Okay. Then but the oil has to be very hot. Yeah. Just okay, so we'll just wait a bit for the oil to heat up and then we'll fry the bread. Now tell me about the salad. How are you going to make the salad? We would um, fry the onions and the tomatoes okay. with the pepper, then we would add the eggs so it'll be like scrambled so eggs. So you're frying this? Yeah. And then um, adding the eggs yes. with the milk? Yes. Okay. Then once we're done, we'll now mix it with the bread and the little um, and carrots and cabbage. Okay, so at what point do these come in? Before we add the Before last we add, so yeah, just, This is also going into the yes, salad yes. as well as the crayfish. Yeah. Or the crayfish is going with the eggs? No, it's going with the salad. It's too. going with the salad yeah. itself. But it will be fried among the bell pepper. Okay, okay. So I think the oil is hot enough. All right. So we're going to. Very pour. exciting. So. Uh, Sometimes when we think Italian, the first thing that comes to our mind is pasta. Yeah. But it's not just about pasta. There are loads of really great, really interesting dishes, uh, Italian dishes out there. And this is one of them that you ought to try. Uh, it has uh, Chef Nathaniel's twist to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as he explained earlier, the fact that he's going to be frying the pepper, the fact that he's adding uh, crayfish, for example, and of course the eggs. All right. So, so it's going to take a little while. Okay, that, that will take a while to fry, right? Yeah. Okay, so we allow it to fry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to, and we have to keep on turning that interval. So, so as one part will not get burnt okay. and the other is Golden get brown, done. Yes. that's the aim. Fantastic. I think we should use this. Okay, yeah, yeah. thank you. you. Yeah. This is going to take a little while. Okay, so it usually takes time for this to yeah. be ready. Yeah, just okay. a little, well, because we'll be turning it. We can't just leave it and go and do another thing. Okay. We have to be turning that. Well, thank goodness for the other side. So we'll get our scrambled eggs ready here, yes. right? Yeah. And then, of course, uh, with that, start oh, this. We can even do it simultaneously. Okay, let me help you with that so okay, you can yes. start with the yeah. scrambled eggs. Mm. All right. So, mm. This. This is something that actually requires attention. You have to keep yes, your eye on yeah. it. So it doesn't so. get burnt. So. Okay, so 
and the egg process, of, a bit of oil. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay. Um, There's barely any oil here. Looks yes. like the bread has soaked it up even. Just a little, because if you add much oil, it will be soaking the so bread it, and okay. it will just okay. change the oil. All right. This, of course, has to be a gege bread or at least the and normal bread yeah, that just is normal not bread. sliced. Yes. So you can cut it up to Exactly. So it will be a little bit big. Because if you slice bread, it will just be tiny and it will get lost. So. Okay. Okay. So yes. chunks like this. Yeah. Cube chunks. And you can increase the size depending Dep on... Oh, you, you can have it bigger as it well. It depends on if you want. So it's, but, the, but the basic thing is that it must be chopped. Okay. So if you like it tiny or bigger, so it depends. Okay. So, so the onions and the pepper yeah. first. So you're gonna mix the 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 egg. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna mix it by the time this is already getting done. Okay. All right then. Uh, we'll get on with the scrambled eggs, and of course, the bread continues to be made. <laughs> uh, you'll see more of that in a few minutes. Uh, but we have to go on this break. Don't go anywhere. We'll return shortly. And now for a dose of Monday motivation. Procrastination is the act of delaying or putting off something. It is a challenge to many people. And of course, uh, it has had at one point or the other, uh, people have gone through you know, this thing called procrastination. And if you have ever had any great idea that you could have implemented immediately and saw results, but you didn't, then this conversation right now is for you. Stop kicking that can forward. Uh, I have here with me this morning the founder and CEO of Vic Abraham Media. She is a best-selling author, motivational speaker, poet, songwriter, and much more. She's joining us this morning. Uh, we're going to be highlighting her own personal story and then talking about uh, the need to stop this detrimental habit of procrastination. Victoria Praise Abraham joining us this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. You're me. Thanks. You're a prolific, prolific writer. You're a songwriter, a poet. Many, many things. Um, procrastination, it's a big deal in the lives of many people. Absolutely. And you have a personal story. Talk to us. Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to say that procrastination is a killer. Hmm. You know, slowly but surely, it's a killer. Um, many years ago, I started writing songs, you know, and I never got round to doing anything about the songs because I believed my voice wasn't good enough. You know, I didn't have the confidence to go out there and really do what I needed to do. And just fear, mm. you know, of success, fear of failure, all kinds of scenarios. At the end of the day, I did nothing for a long time. Until one day I just woke up and said to myself, this can't continue. I've got to do something about this. And I did something. I haven't done all that I need to do, but I took that one step. You know, uh, that's on one side. Yeah. The other uh, short story is the fact that there was a time I needed to start writing books. You know, I, I, I made up my mind to do it. Mm. And, but for a bit, I, I procrastinated. And then eventually I thought to myself, no, I've got to write a book on procrastination. Because I realized that the reason I didn't start making the needed successes that I needed in my life mm. was because I was big on procrastination. And then it occurred to me that a lot of people everywhere procrastinate. Mm. It's the measure that differs. And the more you procrastinate, the less you succeed. Mm. The less you procrastinate, the more you succeed. Well, I like that. Now, um, th there are many things that you mentioned just now um, that could have been reasons for your procrastination. You mentioned a few things. Uh, Fear of success, yes. which, which is very strange, uh, and then fear of failure. Yes. So you're thinking, okay, what if I do this and fail? And then you're thinking also, what if I do this and succeed and can't control what happens after? Exactly. Now, can you give us some reasons why people generally procrastinate? The biggest reason why people procrastinate, believe it or not, is laziness. Wow. The average person is lazy. We just want to sit on our bed, do nothing, have breakfast served, right there in bed, you know, 
and just have a jolly time in life. But we all know <laughs> this is, that. yeah, that, 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 <laughs> right. so, so that's, a lot of people are just lazy, right. plain old lazy. Another reason people procrastinate is peer pressure. You know, the people you hang out with, if nobody is going anywhere, nobody has any strong visions of their life, you know, nobody feels the need to achieve. You just find yourself doing the things that they do. Mm. So peer pressure, especially with teenagers, you know, that is big. You know, if you show me your friend, I can tell you how far you're going to go in life. Right. You right. know, so people procrastinate because of laziness, peer pressure. You won't believe it. Not having good sleep is another reason why people procrastinate. Mm. Because if you don't sleep well at night, when you wake up, you're, you're, you're not together. You know, and once you're not together, you can't focus on one thing at a time. Mm. And if you can't focus on one thing at a time, you get nothing done. And that is procrastination. Yeah, because the, the, you the, keep the postponing. Focus, right. Yeah, because there's no motivation. You're not inspired to take any form of action. At the end of the day, you do nothing. Mm. And that's what procrastination well, is one, all about. Yeah, one of the biggest things you, you've talked about severally is this fear of failure. Yes. Which sort of paralyzes people from taking any step. Talk to us about that. I, I, in my book, because after I noticed that the reason I hadn't done so much in life was because I had procrastinated for so long, I actually wrote a book on procrastination, The Tiny Big First Step. Mm. In that book, I postulated 20 things you can do to stop procrastinating. Mm. You know, one of them is fear paralysis. Stop being afraid. Just take that step. You know, write that examination. Build that house. Mm. You know, stop. You know, people get paralyzed. They, they, don't, they don't know how to take the next step, you know, or they're just, they're just weak. They're just, you know, just visionless. Is it possible that somebody is, is, is weakened by maybe their experiences or past failures? Do, do, do these things also... Uh, it hint, it, it do, yeah. Past failures, obviously, if you've failed before, chances are you're not motivated to take another step to try again. Mm. But you need to overcome that so that you can succeed, you know. Many of us have failed one way or the other. You know, you succeed in some things and you fail in others. But at the end of the day, you gotta keep pushing. You've gotta keep trying. Right. You've gotta keep believing and hoping that things are gonna work out better. Now, Victoria, let, let's talk about, um, uh, we don't have much time, mm. but let's look at uh, a few things that people can do to stop procrastinating. So starting from today, it's Monday morning, um, it's not even 8 o'clock yet, and I want to start taking steps based on some of the things. The first said. thing you got to do is wake up. <laughs> yeah. I I'm telling that. you. So wake up Nigeria. Wake up so, yeah. Nigeria. It's never first been thing, more yeah. apt. Mm -hmm. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Most of us are in sleep state, and we need to wake up. We need to wake up as individuals. We need to wake up as companies. Even as a nation, we need to wake up. Right. So that's why I kudos the Wake Up Nigeria show, because it changes you to just wake up and do it. Yes, indeed. Do yes. it, do it, do it. So Just that's do it. Thing, yeah. That's the first thing is to wake up. Next thing is to decide what you want to achieve per day, per week, per month, per year. Mm. You know, you got to be goal centric, goal focused. You got to have that long term vision to be able to go from the step where you are at at the moment to where you need to be. Talk, talk to us about why goals are so powerful. Goals are powerful. I, about maybe like seven years ago, I started documenting stuff, you know, and I just stumbled on this idea of goal setting. You know, I started setting goals for the day, for the week, for the, for, for the year even. Mm. And it amazed me that I was able to do more with less time right. and succeed more than I'd ever done. All right, so, so how about other, uh, other things, other areas? I mean, you, you've talked to us about setting goals, you've talked to, talked to us about waking up. Uh, are there other areas you, people need to look at? You need to have accountability partners. You know, people that you can trust with your goals and your visions. People that can say to you, you need to do that. Mm. And you, you, you can, they're like your mentors, not necessarily mentor the way we look at it or talk about it in Nigeria or in Africa, but you know, just somebody that, you know, can speak over your life and say, you need to do that. Have you done what you said you were gonna do? So you need to share your visions with people that you trust around you and say, this is what I wanna do. And they can say, listen, do this now mm. and you get it done. So you need accountability partners. Wow, yes. thank you so much, uh, Victoria Praise Abraham for talking to us about procrastination 
and how to stop it. Yes. You know, thank you so much. And uh, I know that there's people watching now who are already making their plans, making notes and ensuring that this week is going to be different from last week as you set your goals and meet them. We're heading back to the kitchen now where Mary is on standby with Chef Nathaniel. Hey, guys. Hi, Yomi. How you doing? Okay, so I've had procrastination as my best friend for years. I really needed to hear that one. Now, back to the kitchen. Chef Nathaniel of Natido Cuisine is preparing breakfast and it's a salad. Uh, an Italian salad. What, what did you call it again? Egg panzanella. Egg panzanella. And yeah. of course, you'll be making a vegetable ke kebab later. Yeah. Fantastic. Kebab, yeah. Okay. So, so far, so good. Tell us about what you've done. For, okay, we've the chopped. Bread and uh, that. Yeah, Let, um, let's start with that. Okay. We because have, everybody missed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is, um, we're just frying the, we're just frying the vegetables. Okay. We have the onions, we have the bell peppers, okay. yellow, green and red. Then we have um, scent leaf okay. inside. And I also added black pepper, rosemary, seasoning, and salt with nutmeg. Okay. So, so that's how come we have this? Yes. All right. So now to add our eggs. eggs. Okay. Next. So we're scrambling the eggs. Yes. So this is actually uh, <laughs> Chef Nathaniel's twist to it. Yeah. In case you're wondering, well, what was with the frying? That's his idea. So that's what makes it his signature style. Wow, that looks yummy. Yeah. Milk and eggs. Yeah, by the yeah. way, that's um, eggs. Uh, how many eggs did you break in Just there? Just two. Two eggs and some cream to make that up. Well, that was a lot of cream, though. Yeah. Okay, so we'll allow that fry, or better still, cook. Yeah. And then what happens next when it's ready? So once we're done, we'll now mix it with the bread. Okay. So we put the bread in when mm. it's ready. Oh, you're putting more scent leaves? Yeah, just to finish it up. Yeah. Okay, so when that is ready, we put in the bread. Yes. Then this comes in last. Yes. Okay, I used to make use of the oil for any reason. No, no, no. Okay. So eggs, um, bread, and then of course our breakfast. Is ready now. Yeah. How many people do you think um, this will serve? Four. Four five. people. Four yeah. or five. And uh, how much bread is this? Like, is it up to? This should be about a loaf of bread. Half. Half a loaf yeah. of bread. The big ones. Just the medium size. The medium like size. Either two hundred or one fifty. Just the uh -uh. medium size. And it was able to cut up to this amount. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes you don't know what <laughs> what you have, what it can make. Yeah. So. We'll put it down with this. Oh, this is ready? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Doesn't need to get burnt too much. Okay. So what goes in next? The bread? Yeah, we we'll need this. All right. So we're still making our own version of salad, or rather Chef Nathaniel's version of Italian salad. Uh, the panzanella salad is, I don't know, <laughs> he's adding eggs, which gives it a twist of its own. Yeah, so... You need to add this. Okay. That's uh, the cabbage and yeah, carrots. carrots. Okay. All right. Done. And so the bread is about the last thing. Yes. Oh, so you're going to have this cooking, like the cooking finishes itself with yes. the heat. Yeah. Oh, right. Wow. This is enough for me. I don't need the bread. <laughs> <laughs> it looks yummy. Okay. Wow. So let's see you do your mix and see what it will look like. I love colors, so I can't wait to see what this will look like. So I dare say we could um, replace uh, the bread with something else. Mm, bread is what is makes it yeah. the, this particular salad. Yes. So because it's an essential. You must use bread. Yeah. It's an essential ingredient. Yes, although. Food is about creativity, so you can just substitute with anything. anything. You can just come up with any idea. And but even with the bread, you can always put something else. Yes. Okay. So okay. it doesn't necessarily need to be just one way traffic kind of. All right. So if you check your screen right now, you'd see the ingredients to make the egg panzanella salad with uh, fruits, kebab, a la Chef Nathaniel. Yes, it's, it's all his style. 
making a twist to every meal. Just the same way you added eggs, for example. Yeah. So everybody can personalize you it. You can just, you can even use um, seafood or any, okay. doesn't need to be just a particular way. Fantastic, fantastic. I'll, I'll do mine with goat meat. <laughs> that, would, that would definitely add it to, you know, my own twist and all. All right, so it's about ready. This is fantastic. Yeah. It's actually ready. Okay, we'll take a, a break while this finishes uh, the whole cooking. I can't wait to see the end result of this and of course taste it. I'm sure you're looking forward to that one as well. Uh, we'll take a break now. Stay with us as Wake Up Nigeria. Yes, Mondays signify that you have another chance to make all that money. Yes, a yeah. brand new week. And hopefully you've been sufficiently motivated not to procrastinate anything this week. Please, get everything done Make today. those notes, make those notes, set yeah. those goals and try to meet up mm -hmm. um, as soon as you can. Start whatever it is today. <laughs> now, it's, it's, it's been a whole hour of learning though. Yeah, you learning know? fun. Lots of stuff. Especially learning not to procrastinate. Just saying. <laughs> there's activity going on in the kitchen. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure what they did with the eggs. I <laughs> okay. just noticed that they poured, you know, some eggs yeah, into Yeah, I don't know. They're still hard at work. Yeah, still hard say. at work. Yeah. Chef Nathaniel doing his thing. Completely ignoring us. It's fine. It's all about the food. <laughs> but we have quite a bit still in store for you. My name is Titi Lyle Owens. And I'm Yummy Ope. We're streaming live right now on Facebook. Don't forget our TVC Connect. So it's happening. Mm. on Facebook right now. Twitter, Instagram, all those uh, online something something. Yes, yeah. please use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria. It seems to trend quite uh, recently. There was a lot trending on our pages. Yeah, and I, once okay. in a while. Once yes, in a while. Indeed. Now, we're not quite done with uh, uh, Turbana, Dakwa Turbana, who's going to be joining us uh, for a person-to-person -person interview. Yes, sir. Finding out what's up with him. Save money, but the money don't save you. Make money, but the money don't make you. Olu a lo lo, wo e ni a lo no. Olu a lo ni la e ni a lo ko. Kapa la kapa la kapa ya no. Great video, great, great video. Now to ensure that we spend less on car maintenance as the rains approach, Ayo Shofela will be talking to us car owners about the right way to drive in a flood. Is it fast? Is it slow? Mm. What should it be like? Should you even drive? Drive at all? Should you just park and walk? Or maybe you should just get a <laughs> walk. Yeah. <laughs> Wade in the water. Just get a um, yeah. car with huge tires. Anyway, we have the managing director and CEO of Micro Media Marketing Limited, Shiliola Ibuonke, uh, who's going to be joining us for our SME series this morning, inspiring uh, entrepreneurs out there yes, sir. on uh, how they started. Mm. and you know their success story essentially it's always interesting to you know to find out how things like that started you guys should put me on your sme series uh, yeah, well and tell you some stories almost some people have stories of procrastinating <laughs> about their businesses for years <laughs> just saying mary is uh you know is what it's a very budding <coughs> entrepreneur right now mm. yes. i thought you were about to mention something else like no no you no, uh, the queen of on. procrastination no, but I've, I've actually made quite a few purchases from her purchases from her uh, and there are a lot of people trying to start things up yeah it's great to learn from people Mary sells everything there. kitchen sink <laughs> <laughs> okay literally everything except human parts okay. wow Mary yeah, I can even organize cow parts for you or go I, I think we should change this just say anything Mike yeah. what do you just say anything. you look like a guy that sells stuff <laughs> Like <laughs> <laughs> electronics. <laughs> wow. <laughs> electronics. Yeah, the way it look like bring my money tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> not you have a container coming, Mike. The kind of electronics. In fact, any type safe. Okay. Oh, yeah. There's money's been made in I electronics. Know, I know Mike sells small chops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I can be a reseller, you know. Wow. Reseller. I can arrange the markets for you. So yeah. buys for four hundred, sells for six hundred. Let's let's oh, talk and then we can do it. It's, so it's good. It's good to do business. Um, mm -hmm. It's one of the things that I know definitely can bring people out of poverty. Yeah. If they know how to do it. Yeah. If they know how to do it. But most people eat their money. 
the profits and the capital on okay. top. Oh, joint. So that's that's one of the biggest challenges. <sighs> but people don't even seem to realize that there are ways to make money without actually having the capital. Uh, so that that's where learning from these entrepreneurs comes in. How did they do it and how far have they actually come? So some of these entrepreneurs actually come out and they're not actually making that much money, but they have a lot of noise around yes. them. Um, so you have to really be careful who you look at as mentors. And then you ask someone to tell you, yeah. ah, it's God. Oh. It's, it's God. And you know it's not God. But that's, like, that's, God. Like, that's like, that's like, that's uh, like default answer. Yeah. And that's like about one of the worst things. Ah, so brother, you're doing well in this business so well now. Ah. So there are certain businesses, based on what Mike is saying, there are certain businesses who um, we see that they look successful mm. outwardly, mm -hmm. but many of them probably, oh, maybe daddy gave them money, yeah. uh, they had yeah. free property, yeah. uh, you know, so different things like that. So, And when you feature them in magazines and in TV shows saying that these guys are leading entrepreneurs, yeah. it's, it's, um, it's deceptive it is. to it is upcoming entrepreneurs because very. they will assume that they can do the same thing, Very. and then when they get in there, they will then discover that. You that know, it's it, not it's exactly the same way. Yeah. You know, it's exactly. the same way some foremost entrepreneurs, I don't call them very big ones, but then you understand that there's a lot involved. Some people, um, I love, we all know that competition strives, mm. pushes the market, yeah. it makes everybody, but there's some people who have been in some kind of markets whereby they've had monopoly, yeah. Yeah, and they've true. done so well, and then, oh, I don't want to say, but they've moved so far, and they like, oh, this guy's an inspiration. Yeah. Oh, God. So there's a lot involved, and everybody has a different story to tell. I don't feel like there's a single way to yeah. make, get it happen. Listen to different stories, pick out what you can, and forge your own path. Yeah, welcome back. Now we have with us singer, songwriter, and all-round entertainer, Dakwato Burner. He gave us a performance earlier on Feel Free. <laughs> and uh, it's about time we had a discussion with him. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. All right, first of all, I love mm. this shirt. Oh, thank man. you. Yeah. This shirt. Like, so are these flowers? <laughs> what are they? Uh, are they it's just, yeah, flowers? It's, yeah, flowers. I actually made it myself. I'm styled by Constant K. Okay, so you make your own outfits? Yeah, I make my outfit. Like, I just started this this year, and I just did, like, close to, like, 15 pieces. Are you serious? Yeah, so I worked with um, a girl called Constant K, and I also worked with my mom. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. Okay, so is this something you want to do on the side, like, make money from, or is it just for mm, you to wear? To be honest, yeah, I just had to, like, Learn how to save money. Okay. Because most times when you call the stylist, they'll give you 100K <laughs> for just, and you wait and still return it back. Mm. So mm. I'm like, I can actually do something. So I went back in history. Yeah. I'll look at people like Ebenezer Obe, yeah. Fela, their type of dressing. So I just entered the Yaba one day. I got a lot of materials. I called my friend, Constant K. I'm like, yo, let's try and fix this stuff. I want something serious? that still make me look like I'm going to school. Mm. Yeah, so mm. I just decided to just so get I, this. From, just from your response now, yeah. I can already see, I can I just have like a little window into who you are. Mm -hmm. You're practical, <clears throat> you know, but then again, you know, that comes from possibly, you know, working with certain people yeah. who've inspired you before. Yeah, right? yeah. For me, growing up, my music is always like represented like um, within my environment, wherever I'm going through at that point in time. When I did the song, in only low any time, in only blue any time, nothing, nothing. At that time, I was like, that was how I was feeling. I was away from my home because I was trying to do this music P. Mm -hmm. And, you know, family, momsy, popsy, both of them are pastors, they ain't supporting wow. the music. Wow. You get me? So I've been away from my house for like um, three years and all that. So my mom got my number. I was in the bedroom somewhere in the cage. I was having my bath. And she called me. This was like a different number. I'm like, ah, let me pick. And first thing I just heard was like, Dakpo, Dakpo, how many times did I call you? <laughs> and I was like, definitely, this is my mom. Wow, okay. So after the whole conversation, I was just telling her, my mom, I know you are not supporting me in this music thing, but see, nothing can stop greatness. You know, they blue anytime, you only blue anytime. You get me? So that was, how, like, that was how I had the inspiration for that one. I just jumped into the studio and I recorded that. And it so, worked. Yeah, and it worked. So most of the time, my music is like my life, like what's going on around my environment mm -hmm. has to be represented in my music. Okay, yeah. so I, I can hear the strong influence of your parents, you know, yeah, while, yeah. while you were younger. Yeah. So you, what's, what did you study in school? Uh, I went to Redeemer's University. And funny, Redeemer's University. <laughs> I studied, Interesting. <laughs> I studied physics elect. Physics. Yeah, because you finished. 
No, nah, I didn't finish. I left from I left my 300 level and I just um, went to a music school, okay. just down in um, Ikeja here, ten strings. Okay. Cause to me, like at that point, I was really like growing, mm -hmm. and I'm like, if I definitely like when I'm done with physics, mm -hmm. do I really want to get in the office nine to five? Mm -hmm. That boy is not that kind of person that will sit down okay. and just be not saying working for somebody, yeah. but doing what a whole lot of people are doing and all that piece. So. Mm -hmm. I just decided that, okay, this music P, I'm taking it serious. And I've been doing music right from my childhood, church. In church? I, yeah, I used to drum, like my, like my parents, pastors. So oh, wow. I go to the church early enough, mm -hmm. like 5.30. And before you know, I'm playing the conga, I'm playing the keyboard. Mm -hmm. And I play a lot of instruments. Okay, so let's list your instruments. You've already said conga. Yeah, I play keyboard. Piano, I'm more keyboard. of a percussionist, though. I okay. play the conga, I play the talking drum. Wow. I play drums, then I play keyboard. Mm. Yeah. So now, these instruments that you play, yeah. how much of an influence has it had in your music right now? Yeah, right now, right now. Most times when I'm in the studio, when I'm working with producers, mm. it's always easy for them because they are not trying to like, um, what key do you sing on? Mm. Uh, I'm just like, bro, I need this, I need that. I have a band. Okay. I used to open for Femi Kuti at the shrine, six wow. to seven. Wow. So like this music thing has, like, it's, like, it's something that has been in me right from time. Mm. But it's just that my parents really didn't just want me to go into it. And I was still young, so they could still really cover my wings at that time. <laughs> so by the time I was already getting university, I was seeing my mates. This one is into fashion, parents supporting them and they're in school. But me, my parents were not supporting me because okay. of, let me say, my background and all of that. You get me? So I just decided to support myself with my music. I, yeah. I want to take you back to what you said. You said mm. you opened for Femi at, yeah, the at the Shrine with your band, yeah. right? Um, tell us about that experience, working with someone as great a legend as Femi. Yeah. Right. Talk Funny to enough, us. I met Femi Kuti on Twitter. No way. Like, I mean, like, that's just the, like, people like that are, are like, they're honest mm. because their industry is different. Their industry is more sacred. Mm. So I met Femi Kuti on um, Twitter. I did a project for my music school that time, myself and my band. And after the project, I was just like, ah, let me just post this on my Twitter. And I posted it and I mentioned Femi Kuti. Wow. And the only thing he said was like, yo, boy, you remind me of me growing up when I was wow. a bit younger. Wow. So that was the statement I took to the shrine. And I met Femi's manager. Femi Kuti's manager took me to Femi Kuti on a Sunday. And he asked me that, young boy, what do you want me to do for you? Like, mm. I don't know what to do for you. Tell me, mm. what do you want me to do for you? And I'm like, I really don't mind if I just open for you before you come on stage. Amazing. And he's like, fine, do you have a band? I said, yes. He said, okay, six to seven every Sunday. Wow. So that was like another platform for me because it was quite new to me. And mm. it was challenging. And too. I guess you could learn a lot from yeah, that Yeah, I well. did. I did. And this was way back, like four years back. Okay. Yeah. So... After that, four years later, mm -hmm. this year you've released three tracks. Yeah. And this is just March. Yeah, this is right? just March, yeah. So what was the plan that before, before you <laughs> enter a new year like 2019 and just drop three tracks like that? Yeah. What was the plan? Last year, last year, I, like, I had a lot of challenges with my label, or rather my former label, Tiny Entertainment. I just dropped a song all through the year. And I'm this kind of guy that I record a lot. Like, I get to the studio, I record two songs, three songs a day, because mm. I record myself too. Okay. So I had a lot of songs for last year, close to like 100 songs, wow. and I just dropped one. Mm. Do you get me? And sometimes as an, as an upcoming artist, it's not just one that you drop that's really going to shake the industry. So people need to see this side of you, see that side of you, do you write for this? So I'm like, man, this year, mm. I really want to show people what you can do yeah what i can do what i stand for so that's why i came up with the name jingo vibes because people call me jingo that's also <laughs> my name like my aka jingo so jingo vibes is just something like ginger your go like pull your trigger type of music you get me because that's the kind of music i make like in only low when you get me like <laughs> songs that are like praise and worship to yourself because most thing about nigerians is uh i'm not saying it's a bad thing but we praise god too much, we forget to praise ourselves. Definitely, we have to give thanks to our creator again. Yes, we do. But like when you wake up in the morning, there are some kind of songs that you should also sing to yourself. I mean, to yourself. Like, I wake up in the morning and I tell myself, Dapo, you get me? Yeah. I say this kind of words into existence. I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, I am like blown away. I'm so <laughs> impressed by your vibe. And yeah. I'm loving your music. The thank performance you. today was epic. Yeah, thank you. And I really am going to be looking out for you. Thank you so really, much. Really, yeah. really, really.
So, uh, <coughs> Dark Water Burner, a.k.a. Gringo, right? Jingo. Jingo? Yeah, G-I-N-G-O. Okay. All right, Jingo. then. I'll get it right. I'll get it right. We we'll have to head over to the garden, though. Yeah. And, of course, Mike and Ayo are on standby for a discussion on car maintenance. Take it away, you guys. All right, it's our auto series, and Ayo is back in the house. Give me a high five. Ah. Okay, so today we're talking about driving in a rainy, rainy season, or driving in a storm, or driving where there's where there's flood, exactly. right? So it's not just only rain. So there could be flood somewhere, and then you're driving. So I know a number of people know or they feel they don't think that the rain does anything to their cars. But then let's talk about the dangers of driving anyhow. Mm -hmm. in a flood and when it's raining all right so it's inevitable you mm. cannot avoid driving through the rain or driving through flood but there are certain things you should have at the back of your mind you should okay. know that okay when I'm approaching the flood there are things I'm supposed to do I'm not supposed to do this I'm not supposed to do that so the first one I'm going to talk about is driving very fast through flood Hmm. There's this mentality a lot of people have that when I see a large pool a of puddle. water, yeah, yeah, so I, I want to drive through very fast. It helps me wash the underneath of my car. I've heard that several times. <laughs> 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 they'll tell you, okay, so they'll yeah, tell you it helps me wash mm. the underneath of my car. Mm. There's more than everything moves off, but contrary to that, it actually does a lot of damage to the car because when you move very fast, you have a fan here, okay, a fan that might what be fun, rotating yeah. at that point in time. Now that fan is going to pick up the water okay. and it's going to move the water all the way to the top here. Now if you don't have an engine cover like this, okay. which I'm going to move to this side, all you right. have coils, ignition coils here, you have a lot of electricals here. If you have one wire that's slightly peeled off, the insulation is slightly peeled off, you have water moved to that, that can cause an electrical surge in the car, True. which can damage a whole lot of things. You have your alternator here, hmm. which if water gets to that, is very dangerous too. So you should not rush through a large puddle of large water puddle or of water. a flood. So your best bet is to just drive slowly. slowly. Yeah. All right. And then if it's very high, if it's I, very if high, it's, if, 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 if the puddle is high mm -hmm. and you, how do you, driving slowly at times, uh, some people say, look, it doesn't really help because the water, if it's quite high, it still gets into some parts you don't want it to get. It's, it will still get there if it's very high. Okay. But one thing you need to know is if you are driving fast, you mm. have an intake, an air intake, which okay. sucks air into the engine. Okay. Now, if you drive too fast through it, remember you're accelerating. Yes, you're you creating are. suction in the engine. You're going to suck water in. That's why mm. we always say just go slow. Let the, the car just glide through And then the how water. does it affect the air, the, air, the air conditioning system? Because I know that's one system that a number of people talk about that gets affected when you drive through water. Because I've seen some people, now like, you want to drive through water and then they turn, they, they, t they take you off take the, AC, the AC, they off. turn it down mm -hmm. or take it off entirely and then they go through. Why one so? of the reasons why they do that is because some cars carry two fans. One fan is controlled by the AC, one fan is controlled by the engine. Some just have one major fan. Okay. Now, if you drive through the flood with the AC on, that fan stays on, which means it's actually going to be helping to move water around the engine. Okay. Another thing is the condenser. When you drive through flood, you're bound to pick up a whole lot of debris, mud and things True. on the surface of the condenser and the radiator. That will block the surface. That can cause a whole lot of issues with the air conditioning system. So we're saying that rule of thumb is that whenever you are going through um, a flood or puddle, don't drive, drive fast. Yes, okay, drive now, slowly. if perchance something had happened, you got into water, what kind of measures can you take? Let's say you've, you've, you've driven through the puddle, it was very deep, or maybe you were fast, or something happened. What pre preventive measures can you take ASAP, like if kind of first aid, what can you do? The first thing you want to do when you get out is check your brakes. Check your brakes? Yes, because okay, definitely when water gets into the, between the brake uh, pad and the rotor, yeah, your brakes are not going to be 100% anymore. If it's automated, I'm sure it will send you a signal or something, no, no, right? No, no. Even before it does that, there okay. are some very basic things you should okay, do. So what can Once you, you do? get on the dry surface, just drive a little pump on the brake. A little pump on the gas. So you're doing stop and go, stop, stop and go, and stop go. and okay, go. That's that is going to heat up the brakes. Mm. Dry whatever water is in between the brake pad and the brake rotor. Does that depend on the brake system or does any kind of brake any system, kind you of brake system, system you have to do that? Wow, so that's one. So you ensure that your brakes are still kick. And then if you have issues with the brakes at that point, what next? I just advise that you park, park and call your mechanic. Seriously, you don't <laughs> want to have issues <laughs> with, with, well, <laughs> with water yeah, and your true. brakes. With, just with park and, and call your mechanic. Then another thing that happens, which is not very common, is hydroplaning. All right. Can you? That is when 
your Speak. tires are no longer <laughs> Speak English. <laughs> your, your tires are no longer in contact with the road ah. when you get into a flood. I've seen it a couple of you're times. You're floating. Yeah, you're floating, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what kind of car is that one? I saw it twice. You remember okay. when Lecky had that very bad flood? Like I think two years ago. That's always. <laughs> <laughs> That's always. I saw it twice. I actually That's saw it live twice where the owner was just turning the steering. There was no contact. Hey, wait, wait, so the car was just turning so the on the car was own. just exactly. <laughs> 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 the car the was just turning on the own. Exactly. Man. So that is very dangerous. That's one of the reasons why we say don't rush through. Flood. Wait, but really, but really, but really, are you really serious about the car that can I'm floating? serious. The car will float. And one of the reasons why that will happen, apart from the water, is when you have bad tires. If you have no thread on the tire anymore, you just have a, a slippery surface. It, the car will turn into a boat. The guy just a balloon. Yeah. It will turn into a boat. <laughs> Don't you think we need those kind of cars for some of those lucky floods? So that it just, it's no, not submerged, it just rises up above. The serious thing is, you're laughing now. You don't want to be in a situation like that because it's really, really not funny. Okay. So it's one of the things that happens with floods and All one right. of the reasons why we say don't rush through floods. Thank you very much, Aya. It was quite um, a very educating and enlightening session today. If you don't want your car to turn on you, man, <laughs> be careful when you are driving through flood. That's all we can take on this segment. We'll take a break and we'll be back with much more. Welcome back. Now we have our SME series uh, this Monday morning. And in 2010, Shirola Ibironke founded one of Nigeria's foremost content acquisition and distribution companies, uh, Micromedia Marketing Limited. And uh, the company has produced quite a number of successful television content. Now she currently spearheads the international distribution of African drama series and movies under her company. Uh, Media Sales Africa. And she's joining us this morning to talk about her success story, the challenges, and uh, how much money she's making. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us uh, this, this morning. Me. Now, this SME series, usually it's really about encouraging entrepreneurs and also people who are looking to strike out on their own things that we should look out for. But you're going to tell us um, how you started in 2010. In 2010, um, Micromedia was birthed, but before then I was already in line with the um, the business line that we were starting off with. Mm. That means that was content distribution, acquisition and distribution. Mm. Micromedia was born out of the fact that we wanted to fill a gap in the TV content marketing industry at the time. And that's why I resigned from my previous organization and... Um, went all out wow. to start this. So, I mean, it's, a, it's always a big, a big challenge, where, especially when someone who has a regular job, your salaries are being paid, mm -hmm. at least that's a secure environment. Yes. And then you then strike out that, okay, you know what, I'm, I think I'm going to start my own business. When does an entrepreneur, do, when do you get to a point where um, you want to do that? Like, if, if you were giving somebody an advice who had his regular job, um, how do you know that this is the time to do this? Quit and start on a, a new business. There's actually a, a, a hunch that comes on you. You begin to, what I try to advise people mostly is that you must have gone through apprenticeship for what you want to do. Mm. You don't just set out not knowing what, where the network, the distribution, the channels, the pipelines that will feed the, the, in the, the whatever business you're going into. So for, for us in Micromedia, for me, about starting, I'd spent over 10 years in the industry. Wow. Okay. Working in the industry. So I already built a network. I already built an understanding of what the, what's the who would be feeding me the content, who would, who would I be selling to, who my clientele network would be like. So it wasn't like I was just going out there. The only thing I didn't have was the funding, hmm. to like a large funding to start the business. But I already had um, a bit of equity mm. in not f physical capital, but I had uh, a huge network capital. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I like this idea about network capital. We'll, co we'll come back to that later. One of the biggest challenges I know uh, people have when starting a business is getting new clients. So talk to us about how you got your first client. First client would be, uh, it would be, like I said, the network of clients that I had at the time. Yeah. I reached out to quite a lot of them and told them, I, I 
pitch the gap analysis. At the time, we had um, content that, when I mean content, I mean TV series that you watch on, on television. Yeah. We had the Mexican ones, we had to, but we didn't have the, the core African ones. And I knew the Nigerians were growing up to wanting to see just their own skin talk to them mm. on television. And at the time, I just had my first baby, so I was home for a while. Mm. And I began to watch um, uh, um, DSTV. I realized that we had quite a lot of um, African content coming up. Mm. And that wasn't the same on, on the terrestrial television. That's um, TVC, one so of them. Saw, so you saw a so gap. So I, I saw the gap. I, 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 I identified the gap analysis and uh, I set out to, to mm. I launched out on that. And on then, that of course, trend. you got your first client and then it, it became a success story. Now, to, um, the challenges that, that you faced, um, a number of times, what we usually find, especially in, in a business climate like Nigeria, is that you start a business, maybe you quit your job and you encounter challenges and then maybe after a year or so you start looking for a job you say you know what i'm going back to the job market why did you decide that you were going to stick with this no matter what well before then i had um i had enrolled in the business school and um, i already understood what the cycle of um, operational excellence would be mm -hmm. the fact that if you're setting out a business don't expect to earn real funding in the first six months mm -hmm. you have to understand how the business would roll over and try to create um, a bit of capital to sustain yourself within that period of time. And then you begin to break even. And when you even break even, the, the funding, well, that's what a lot of entrepreneurs don't know. The funds you make from your business does not belong to you. Mm. It belongs to the business. Right. Yes. So you then have to keep um, either creating it, expanding, either you diversify, don't diversify at the time though, either you expand the business, add more to your retinue of product which then begins to generate funding for you from different um, streamlines. That's, that's exactly what we set out with, and that's how we became successful. Wow, okay, so, yeah. so, um, so your background, you know, attending uh, the business school. I'm originally an economist. Okay, oh, yeah, originally. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that, um, and then of course attending business school as well, yes. helped you to be able to shape and you know, shape your expectations in yes. the future, which was, yes. which was important. How about mentoring? Did you have any mentors? Well, I would say my mentors have always been the ones that have been in the business with me mm -hmm. for quite a while. So reaching out to them, explaining to them what I was setting out to do. You know, there were quite a lot of um, people advising on what to do. Some were very, very, you know, a bit um, hesitant. Like, why would you want to just turn out like that? Mm -hmm. with, and you, start, you want to start big. You don't even want to just try to create something small. But... We really wanted to launch out and launch out really big, and that's exactly what we did. So let's talk about discipline uh, with money, because sometimes you know you, you said just now that a lot of entrepreneurs don't know that the money you make from a business belongs to the business. Yes. Um, how were you able to maintain discipline, you know, through the various cycles of your business, and then you know continue to expand? Well, for us in uh, micromedia, what we do basically, like I said. In corporate financial accounting, though, you always have different levels of funding that come to you. So there's the operational funding, which has to sustain your business. There's the retained earnings, which you must keep after you declare your income for the year. So uh, where does operational funding come from? It comes from, you, so what you must do at the set out of any business, you must do scenario mapping. You must understand the business that you're going into. Put everything, even the cost of working from here to there, mm. it comes at a cost to you so you must map the whole operations of your business and put a cost to it so that's where the funding comes from so that means that if i'm selling pepper now mm -hmm. and it comes at 10 there it comes with the cost of going to access the pepper whether in the farm or i'm going to access it I'm going to buy it from a, a dealer. Or I'm going to get it from a wholesaler. Mm. Do you understand? So people, what so I'm people don't put all these things into consideration. Yes, and that's why the businesses don't um, get successful over time. Mm. They run out of understanding that I should have created an operational funding for my business, and knowing that no matter what happens, in times of rain, in times of um, drought, you must have operational funding. Yeah, because what, what happens is that you know you get ten thousand to start a business. And then you invest on part of it, and but you're not considering the transport that it took you to go to Lagos Island to buy the stuff. Yes, yeah. And then after a while, you and just those costs, those are your cost of sales, which are the most important part of the element that created your product in the first place. Mm. Wow. All right. So dealing with success, I mean, we're, we're going to be rounding off in a minute or two. But dealing with success, when money starts coming in, you're making profits. What do you do? 
when you begin to make profit, like I said, you need to understand if you have to add more products to your existing, because what is generating money for you now might not generate money for you in another five years or mm. six years. So let me take an example with the, with the tel telcos. Before, voice data, voice used to be the main um, generating income for them, income generation for them, but now it's data. So more or less, like, that was what used to make so much money for them. SMS used to make so much money for them, but new technology has changed. So what you have to do when you start making money is open the line, create more products that would always, that would keep that business and keep that service running mm -hmm. over a period of years. Wow, still a light, Bill. Okay, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, I'm sure one or two people are inspired and they've taken a cue from what you have said. But we're going to be heading to the kitchen now to reward you for all your hard work okay. since 2010. <laughs> Please join me uh, with uh, to join the guys over there. Okay. Let's go together. This way, please. Yeah. All right. <laughs> You're welcome to food. the kitchen. Welcome. Thank you. Oh, Thanks for having Absolutely. me. Thank you. You Just all look beautiful, too. Thank you. Please take a seat. All right. So you're welcome to the kitchen. Uh, we have uh, Chef Nathaniel today. Hi, she chef. made the breakfast. So uh, what is this called? This is called egg panzanella salad with wow. fruit kebab. Wow. Hey. And look at those chunks. They're salad. actually bread, not chicken. Oh. So wow. he'll tell you how he made this. So, okay, so talk to us. Yes. Okay, after Please. I finish chopping the bread into like a, a square shape, they will now fry the bread to be like golden brown. Wow. To be crispy. Then now fry the vegetables and mix it with, with the eggs. Then. All right. That's a twist, though. Honestly. The usual is in the fried, fried. <laughs> yeah, the usual is in fried, but. <laughs> and there's no egg in the regular. So, that okay. tower of Can I have vegetables? Taste? Yes, yeah. it's all yours. Yes. Oh, really? Yes. yes. Oh, that's, that's Please tell us what you think. But um, bread, when it's like roasted down, there's a word they call it in salads. It's skipped my mind now. Hmm. I, I'm trying to remember what they call it when you have bread. Don't, don't look at me when, you, when, yeah, when, I'm when to asking remember. that question. I'm so. Well, well done, Chef Nathan. You like it? Nice, uh, yeah, this is really nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. And so, those are French veg. Oh, you could go on. It's all yours. Please. Oh, please. Yeah. And while well, she's is, enjoying that. There's a whole lot <laughs> being on mine. Yeah. Now we have so many shout outs to give. Mm -hmm. A big shout out to our friends uh, at Homely NG. Yeah, for the kitchen accessories on the show. And for La. At for last place. You owe me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not just a haircut. That I need to you know, get what? my hair jerry curled. You want to yeah. jerry curl your hair? You? Oh my you goodness. That should be interesting. I'm jerry curled. Can't I wait to see, see that. that. <laughs> jerry curl hanging to my shoulders. Really? Looking like Eddie Murphy or something. Oh wow. From way back. Okay. So we, you heard it here first. <laughs> Yomi's going to try a new look soon. <laughs> but uh, it's been fun. It's been an interesting Monday morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sufficiently motivated not to procrastinate. Yes, indeed. Uh, don't forget, uh, we got that, <laughs> that information from Victoria Praise Abraham earlier on. Yes, indeed. Procrastination is deadly. That's what she said. Mm. So mm. start early, start today. Yes, indeed. And especially since it's a brand new week, yeah, get to the bank, see what's there, and see how much you made <laughs> no, no, last no. month, you're and already, see how much you're going to spend no, no, this there are, month. There are alerts on your phone that let you know, you already know how much is at the bank. Are you don't sure? Need to go there. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, uh, Shilola. Oh, my Thank you for having and, me. And uh, Chef Nathaniel, well done. Yeah. yeah. All right. We'll be back again tomorrow have for another edition of Wake Up Nigeria. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. <laughs>